Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum students. Welcome back to our online lecture series on electrical machines. This is Muhammad Uwais, your course instructor. The weekly schedule for our online lectures for this course. The major references. And your textbook. So transformer was the topic which we were discussing previously and we are continuing with the same topic. Okay, let's continue with transformers EMF equation. This is uh, the next topic. We want to find out the EMF equations for the transformers primary and secondary. So let uh, these quantities be defined as they are here. NP is the prime number of turns in the primary. NS is the number of turns in secondary. And let phi m be the maximum flux in the core and f be the frequency of AC input. Okay, now uh, consider this figure. Now, uh, this is th this figure shows the, the flux uh, alternating uh, during a cycle. Okay, so if you can see, if you pay attention here, you will realize that this flux is actually changing from 0 to its maximum point which is phi of m in time t is equal to 1 over f so in quarter cycle the flux is actually uh, moving from 0 to maximum so it's changing from 0 to maximum okay this has been shown here so t is equal to 1 over 4 of f then if you want to find out the average rate of change of flux per turn we are talking about per turn at this moment this should be nothing but the change in flux so from a 0 to 5m it's changing this is a change in flux 5m 5m minus 0 and now this is the time duration okay 1 over f in which it's just average rate of change of flux remember so this essentially uh, gets equal to 4f into 5 of m now since we know that rate of change of flux is nothing but equal to induced EMF okay therefore the average EMF per turn will be nothing but equivalent to average rate of change of flux per turn and this should be for F phi M and the unit will be volts so now this is my average EMF per turn so now that we have found out the value of average EMF per turn, we can find out the value of the RMS value of EMF per turn if we know how they are rela related with each other. And to find out that relation, we need to see uh, how are the RMS and EMF value of a sinusoid related with each other because the flux is also varying sinusoidally. And we know that relation is given by the form factor which is given here so you see the RMS and the average value are related with each other by a factor of 1.11 since I have my average value with me I can now find out the value of RMS value as well so then the RMS value of EMF per turn is given by 1.114 f 4.4 f into 5m so this is now my RMS value of EMF per turn so we shall be using this relation in some of our numerical we need to remember now this is my RMS value of EMF per turn okay now this is EMF, RMS value of EMF per turn now if I want to find out the RMS value of EMF across the in, entire primary let's say then what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this uh, term with the number of turns in the primary okay so this is what I do exactly. So I multiply the RMS value of EMF per turn, which is this, which is here. This is the RMS value of EMF per turn. I multiply it with the number of turns in the primary. So once I do this, now I shall have my uh, induced EMF. Okay. This is the RMS value of EMF across the primary. This is not per turn, but this is entire primary side. Okay. And the same relation will be used for the RMS value at the second side as well. It says the ES is given by this relationship. If you see, uh, these are exactly the same and the only difference is that of the number of turns. So now we know 
uh, what is the EMF equation <clears throat> of a transformer. We can find out the uh, EMF uh, value of induced EMF at, on, at the primary and at the secondary side as well. <clears throat> it's high time that we solve some uh, simple numericals related to this topic. So let's do this now. Okay, now we are going to solve uh, some problems from B.L. Raja. They say this book has been uh, referred in, in the citation. So you can download this book as well. If you are not able to find it online, please let me know. So uh, this is from uh, B.L. Raja. Okay, let's see what do we have. Now in this question, we are given the flux density in the core. Uh, <clears throat> and it's 1.2 Weber per meter square or Tesla. So uh, these are the specifications. We have 250 uh, ratio 3000 volts, which means at the primary we have uh, 250 volts. Okay, so uh, at the primary it's uh, 250. This is at the primary and on the secondary we have 3000 volts, whereas the frequency is 50 hertz. And now it says that if the EMF per turn is 8 volts, remember we, we discussed this relation in the previous slide. So in the, here it says that the EMF per turn is given by this relationship. Now we have to find out the, the primary and secondary turns and also the area of the core. Let's begin with the first part. It's pretty simple. So if you, if you remember the previous slide, this is what we did. So we said that the induced EMF or the EMF is equal to uh, n number of turns, total uh, total EMF is equal to number of turns, the primary. There we were using uh, P as the subscript for primary. Here we are using E1 referring to the primary side. Okay, So N1 is the number of turns in the primary multiplied with the EMF induced per turn. So if, you, if you use this relationship, you can simply find out the value of N1. And the same relation holds for the secondary as well. And so sec, uh, it shall be given as N2 is given by the EMF, or oh, oh, sorry, uh, the total voltage at the secondary, which is uh, 3000 volt, the RMS value. Remember, these whenever uh, you get some voltages, you see some AC voltages, you always have to consider them as the RMS value, unless they have been stated otherwise, okay? So this is my, these are my RMS values. So this is the secondary RMS value. If I divide it by the EMF per turn, then I shall be able to get my number of turns. Okay, so this is 375. Once you have this, we need to find out the area of the core. You might be a bit worried that we have so far not discussed any relation that relates the area of the core. But in the previous relation on the in the previous slide, you remember this was the relation which was given. Okay, so minus is sign is often used with this. Uh, but even if we do not use this because we are only for, uh, interested in the magnitude, uh, this this term, this BM into A. What is this term? This term is nothing but the. What is this, students? This is the flux. So BM into A. Okay, I think. So you have to bear with me with my artistic skills, obviously. So it's a new experience for us as that we are thoroughly enjoying this. Yeah. So this is BM into A, okay? So now you, this BM into A is your flux. So now since uh, we know about a flux we, uh, in the previous relationship, we discussed flux. So simply replace the flux in the previous relation with BM into A. Okay, uh, since you have been given the value of the, uh, the flux density, you have BM with you. Beam is given. Simply uh, replace um, the values of the parameters in this equation and you shall be able to get the value of area. Okay, students. So th this is just a very simple example. I just want to show you these kind of examples. We won't be uh, discussing these kind of examples uh, in much detail, but just to give you a flavor maybe. Okay, let's have a look at another example. Mm, uh, this says that we have a single phase transformer with 400 primary uh, windings and 1000 secondary uh, turns. Sorry, uh, 4400 primary turns. Okay, the cross sectional area has also been given here. If the primary winding be connected to a 50 hertz supply at 520 volts, so what is this 520? 
Now this is my uh, EMF, okay, primary EMF. We are supposed to find out the value of the peak value of the flux density in the core and also the voltage induced in the second wave winding. Again, using the previous relationships, uh, but there is a, a small twist here. Maybe um, you know this in advance or it, this may be a bit different for you. Now you see this is defined as K is N2 or N1. Previously, when we were discussing uh, Chapman, there we use the relationship as N1 divided by N2 if you remember, okay? But I said that in some other books you will find it differently. So the, the here in BL Thraja, it uses this relationship for turns ratio as N2 divided by N1. But you can use uh, this relationship using uh, that of Chapman as well. If you use A is as N1 or N2, uh, it should still work, okay? So don't get confused. So you, what you need to find is, is the turns ratio. Once you find the turns ratio, which is here 2.5, then you know that how the uh, primary and secondary voltages are related with each other. So either you use this relationship from BL Thraja or use that of Chapman. Both, uh, in both cases, you will find out the same value of the voltage at the secondary, which comes out to be 1300 volts again. Okay. Uh, lastly, then you, you need to find out the value of the uh, voltage induced in the secondary that is uh, in fact we have found this out we need to find out the value of the flux density in the core so i know the value of induced emf at the primary even i have my even with me so all other parameters are also known the only thing which is unknown is my flux density okay so i just don't know about the flux density there it is flux density once i put all other parameters into this equation i shall have the value of my flux density so you see these are pretty straightforward examples but it's still worth it uh, that we discuss uh, it here okay let's proceed so in the previous slide we uh, solved some of the problems related to the transformer emf equation here you see some more examples uh, we since we are limited uh, with our time uh, i request you all to kindly go through these examples as well uh, you will find the solution of these in uh, thiraja but please uh, try to solve these questions yourself and then maybe you can refer to Thiraja for the solution, for the confirmation of your answers, okay? Okay, uh, previously we discussed uh, ideal transformers and uh, now it's the time to discuss the real transformers because, you know, ideals, they do not exist in, uh, in reality. So let's see how uh, the real transformers uh, are different from practical or uh, sorry from the ideal transformers okay and then the characteristics of any real transformer they can approximate the characteristics of an ideal transformer but that will only be an approximation and only up to a certain uh, degree okay so please remember that when whenever we are talking about real transformers their behavior are bound to be different from uh, ideal transformer so students, here you can see um, a transform the model of a transformer on, on your left. Okay, let me show it to you. So this is the model of a transformer. So an AC voltage has been applied at the primary while the secondary has been left open circuited. And you can also see the hysteresis curve. Okay, this is the hysteresis curve of the transformer. You remember we discussed this in chapter one. So how, how do we get this particular curve? Okay, now let's proceed further with our theory of a real transformers. Now we know that the basis of transformer uh, op uh, operation or transformer action is given by Faraday's law, which is given by this relation. So E induced is d delta divided by dt. Now, now you might be wondering what is this delta? Okay, now this delta is the flux linkage in the coil it's across which the voltage is being induced and it is actually the sum of the flux you can see it's, it's the sum we are just summing up the uh, in the flux through each turn in the coil okay and then we simply uh, sum this up the the flux which is passing through each turn in the coil okay then we we define another quantity as um, uh, average flux per turn Okay, and we you, you should know that the total flux linkage 
through a coil is not just uh, n into phi. Previously, we discussed something like that, where n is the number of turns uh, in the coil. Because the flux passing through each turn of a coil is slightly different from the flux in the, in the other turns, okay? And it's because depending on the portion of the turn within the coil, okay? Sorry, the position of the turn, not the portion, the position of the turn within the coil. It depends what is the position of the turn within the coil. But we can still uh, somehow define an average flux per turn which has been shown here. So this is your average flux per turn. Okay, so if the total flux linkage in all the turns of the coil is lambda, which is shown here, if this is lambda, and if there are n turns, total number of turns, then the average flux per turn is given by lambda divided by n. Okay, students, I hope this is clear to you. Then the, by Faraday's law, we can simply write it down as E induced is given by n into d phi divided by dt, d phi dash divided by dt, where this phi dash is nothing but your average flux per turn. So let's continue with our discussion on the operation of uh, real transformers. Um, in the previous slide, uh, we, we uh, found out that E induced is given by this relation. Yeah, my bus relation is it's given by n d phi dash over dt. Phi dash kya tha my bus students? Phi dash dash was uh, the average flux okay per turn. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna define kar diya tha ki average flux per turn ko hum phi se represent kar rahe. Ab hum yahan ye dekhne ja rahe hain ki when we apply uh, a voltage uh, Vp directly primary pe agar voltage apply karte hain to dekhte hain ki my bus system mein kya hone ja rahe hain. Transformers kis tarikhe se behave karte hain. Thik hai? So, we have said that when we apply voltage, the sun current will flow and we will get some flux. How will we get flux from the same Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction? If you convert this integral, ko, agar aap convert in, oh, sorry, this is the differential. If I convert this differential, I am talking about this differential. I am talking about this differential. So, if I convert this differential, ko, uh, और मुझे phi निकालना है इसमें से तो मैं क्या करूंगा मुझे इस इक्वेशन को सिंपली इंटीग्रेट कर दूंगा सो so, जब आप इस इंटीग्रेशन के लिए डालेंगे तो ये पूरी इक्वेशन आपके पास कुछ यूं आ जाएगी यहां पर ठीक है सो phi डैश की इक्वेशन आपको यहां मिल जाएगी दिस इज गिवन बाय 1 ओवर np इंटीग्रल ऑफ vp vp के है जी जी हमने इन यूज की जगह पे हमने क्या लिख दिया जी प्राइमरी के ऊपर हमने वोल्टेज अप्लाई कर दिया डायरेक्टली जैसे कि आपको यहां नजर भी आ रहा होगा कि हमने प्राइमरी साइड के ऊपर यहां पे एक वोल्टेज अप्लाई कर दिया अच्छा जी तो ये हमारे पास अब ये एक फ्लक्स आ चुका है ठीक है और ये फ्लक्स कहां पर है अब हमारे पास प्राइमरी के ऊपर आ चुका है अब हमें ये देखना है कि जब ये फ्लक्स मेरे पास ट्रांसफार्मर में आ चुका है अब किस तरीके से ये सेकेंडरी के साथ लिंक होने जा रहा है ठीक है तो ये फ्लक्स आया सेकेंडरी में सारा का सारा जाएगा किस तरीके से जाएगा रिमेंबर हम जो बात करें वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट रियल ट्रांसफार्मर वी आर नॉट टॉकिंग अबाउट we are not talking about uh, ideal transformers. Ideal transformer means it is understood that the flux here will flux in the secondary. Mein bhi mil raha hoga. So let's see that real transformers in which way they are developed. Okay, students, uh, this is an important topic. Uh, understanding ke liye is, is more important. Okay? This uh, relation we have seen in the last slide. Ke andar, flux is coming. Okay? तो अब हम कहते हैं कि हम ये नहीं मालूम कि जब हम रियल ट्रांसफार्मर की बात करेंगे तो किस तरीके से ये फ्लक्स डिस्ट्रीब्यूट होने हैं ठीक है तो मैं आपको यहां दिखा देता हूं जरा अगर आप इफ यू फोकस हियर यहां आप देखें तो होना ये है कि हमारे पास जो ये फ्लक्स है अगर मैं इसे प्राइमरी सेट के ऊपर डिफाइन करूं तो मैं इसमें सबस्क्रिप्ट में एक p यूज कर रहा हूं सो दिस इज माय फ्लक्स एट द प्राइमरी साइड अगर आप इस इक्वेशन में गौर करें तो इट सेस कि इसके दो पार्ट्स हैं वन इज phi m और दूसरा पार्ट क्या है मेरे पास phi lp तो जैसे हमने कहा था कि आइडियल ट्रांसफार्मर में तो सारा का सारा फ्लक्स जो यहां पे है वो सेकेंडरी में लिंक हो जाने अब ये देखना है कि प्राइमरी रियल ट्रांसफार्मर में क्या होता है तो एक्चुअली व्हाट हैपेंस के जो जो फ्लक्स यहां जनरेट हुआ था वो सारा का सारा सेकेंडरी में लिंक नहीं हो पाएगा बल्कि सम पार्ट ऑफ दैट फ्लक्स विल बी लॉस्ट ड्यू टू लीकेज फ्लक्स व्हिच यू कैन सी हियर ओके कैन यू सी दैट स्टूडेंट्स हाइलाइटर मैंने वहीं रखा हुआ था this is the flux. So, ये वो flux है मेरे पास जो मेरे पास link नहीं होगा secondary में, बल्कि this will uh, travel via air. 
so this uh, is represented as loss this is the flux component which we call as primary leakage flux primary means kuch flux leak hoke air air mein radiate ho chuke theek hai so jo part secondary ke sath link hua hai it is this flux phi m theek hai ye secondary ke sath hamare paas link ho chuke the flux component which has been linked with both primary and secondary coils ओके जी एग्जैक्टली सेम पैटर्न के ऊपर हम सेकेंडरी में भी बात करेंगे कि मेरे पास सेकेंडरी साइड के ऊपर भी कुछ फ्लक्स मेरे पास लीकेज फ्लक्स के तौर पे जाया हो जाएगा ठीक है ये सिंपली वो फ्लक्स है जो ना प्राइमरी का हिस्सा है ना वो सेकेंडरी का हिस्सा है एक्चुअली आपस में लिंक नहीं हुआ सॉरी ये वो हिस्सा है जो लिंक नहीं हो पाया एक्चुअली जो जो फ्लक्स आपस में इन दोनों में लिंक हो रहे दैट इज द एक्चुअल फ्लक्स विच वी शेल बी यूटिलाइजिंग ठीक है जिसको हमने फाइ एम से रिप्रेजेंट किया हो ठीक है स्टूडेंट्स सो फाइ एम इज द फ्लक्स विच शेल बी यूटिलाइज वेर एज दिस फाइ एल पी एंड फाइ एल एस ये वो फ्लक्स है जो कि लीकेज के फॉर्म में हुए ठीक है इस फाइ एम को हम म्यूचुअल फ्लक्स भी कह रहे होंगे ठीक है सो एक मेरे पास म्यूचुअल फ्लक्स का कंपोनेंट आ गया और दूसरा मेरे पास लीकेज का यही चीज आपको यहाँ पे भी दिखाई गई है एंड रिमेम्बर एग्जैक्टली सेम यही डिस्कशन हमने प्रीवियस स्लाइड के ऊपर भी किया था so i hope this is clear okay students uh, let's now find out the voltage ratio across a real transformer we know that for uh, an ideal transformer how the primary and secondary voltages are related with each other now it's time uh, uh, to to actually uh, find out the relationship for a real transformer okay and see how uh, how much it deviates uh, than for an ideal transformer okay so let's proceed so uh, by faraday's law of electromagnetic induction we know this the voltage at the primary is given by this relationship np d phi p over dt remember what is this phi dash this phi dash is the average flux okay at the primary side and we said uh, in the previous slide that it has two parts two components one part is the mutual flux and the other is the leakage flux as can be seen here so what we did we, what we have done simply we have replaced phi p by phi m and phi lp and this is what we get okay so hum isko chahe to we can write it down like this as well we define as a, this is the voltage at the primary side and this is uh, the component which was lost due to leakage flux theek hai this was uh, the voltage which we applied okay then we know that uh, actually this ep is actually equal to np d phi m over dt so now we have this relationship this is the actual voltage which uh, we, which is now appearing across the secondary or uh, across the primary okay nice so using the same pattern for the secondary as well we get this very same relationship and we say that e of s is nothing but this same relationship ns d phi m into dt now if we find out the uh, ratio voltage ratio since i said at the start or of the beginning of this uh, slide that we are interested in finding out the voltage ratio hum voltage ratio nikalna cha rahe hain theek hai dekhna cha rahe hain ki kis tarike se ye uske sath related hai ideal transformer ke sath kitna different hai theek hai ji so aisa kar lete hain ki hum inko divide kar lete hain let's divide the two quantities es and ep or ep or es whatever you want Here we have done this like this way. Ep divided by E of S is Np or Ns A. So this is how we define S turns ratio for a real transformer. ठीक है जी? Real transformer के लिए हम Ep and Es की बात कर रहे होते हैं. Now how much is this different from uh, an ideal transformer? ठीक है. But if you if you realize or if you pay attention, then you know that generally the leakage flux is considerably low as compared to the mutual flux so then in that case we can write down as the phi of m is this phi of m is or the mutual flux if it is greater greater than the leakage flux or we can say that the leakage flux contribution of leakage flux is minimum then in that case acha ji this is also for primary and also can be written for secondary then ep of s can simply be replaced by this relationship vp and v of s okay but uh, for this relation to be uh, equal or close to this relationship the leakage flux has to be as low as possible 
So apparently we see that it's quite um, close to the um, ideal transformer and we, we can in fact sometimes use this very relationship as well if we just simply reduce or uh, just ignore the, uh, the, uh, the leakage flux. Okay students, uh, actually you uh, may realize that we are talking a lot theory this is because um, we are discussing the theory or the operation of a real transformer किस तरीके से deviation है ideal transformer के मुकाबले में क्योंकि actually what we are interested is to we are interested in finding out the equivalent circuit of a real transformer उसके लिए हमें कुछ components हैं और कुछ phenomena हैं जो discuss करने पड़ रहे हैं ठीक है मैं simply आपको direct वहाँ ले जा सकता हूँ to the equivalent circuit but I just wanted to explain these topics to you so that if you are not able to understand it from the book आप यहाँ पे उसे देख सकें so अगर आपको थोड़ी सी if you're getting a bit bored तो be with me and in probably in the next lecture things will be much easier for you okay क्योंकि आगे जाके हम थोड़ा application की तरफ कुछ circuits की तरफ आ रहे हैं यहाँ पे we are more interested in the magnetic relationships of transformer okay so now यहाँ पे अब हम एक और component देखने जा रहे हैं और एक और effect कह रहे हैं आप इसे कि जब हम एक AC power apply करते हैं transformer के across तो क्या होता है? तो we see that there is a current in the primary, okay? Even if the secondary has been kept open circuited, जैसे कि आपको यहाँ नजर आ रहा है, still हमें एक component मिलता है, एक एक current there is a current IP of T which is flowing into the primary, ठीक है? So we are going to discuss that effect here. ये वो current है जो हमें चाहिए होते हैं अपने in order to have the flux available, okay? इसके बाहर जो हमारी working phenomena है, वो हम आगे कर नहीं सकते, ठीक है? So this is required to produce flux in real ferromagnetic core, ठीक है जी? हमारी जो core है transformer की, this is a ferromagnetic core, and this flux is required. इतना current होना चाहिए, so that आपके पास core magnetized रहे, ठीक है students? अच्छा जी, चलें आगे चलते हैं। तो एक्चुअली हमारे पास है क्या कि इस करंट के दो कंपोनेंट्स हैं जब हम कहने के प्राइमरी में जो करंट जा रहा है इस वक्त ठीक है ये तो टू कंपोनेंट्स वन इस कॉल्ड डी मैग्नेटाइजेशन करंट एंड डी अदर इस कॉल्ड डी कोल लॉस करंट ठीक है सो डी फर्स्ट कंपोनेंट व्हिच इज व्हिच इज डी मैग्नेटाइजेशन करंट दिस इज डी करंट रिक्वायर्ड टू प्रोड्यूस डी फ्लक्स इन डी कोल जिस करंट की हम बात कर रहे थे ठीक है सो एक्चुअली इस करंट को हम ओवरऑल अभी जो हम ओवरऑल प्राइमरी में जो करंट देख रहे थे एक्चुअली दिस इज कॉल्ड माय एक्साइटेशन करंट टोटल एक्साइटेशन करंट और उस करंट जो है जिसको अभी हम मैं अगर आपको दिखा देता हूँ किस तरीके से हम उसे रिप्रेजेंट कर रहे होते हैं वी से ये जो करंट जिस करंट की हम बात कर रहे हैं दिस हैज टू पार्ट दिस इज एक्चुअली आई एक्साइटेशन करंट और इसके एक्चुअली दो पार्ट्स हैं ठीक है एक पार्ट मेरे पास यही आ गया जो आपको यहाँ नजर आ रहे द मैग्नेटाइजेशन करंट एंड द अदर पार्ट इज इज दिस को लॉस करंट ये दो पार्ट्स हैं जो हम डिस्कस करने जा रहे हैं। तो पहले हम मैग्नेटाइजेशन करंट को डिस्कस कर लेंगे और इसके बाद हम कोलॉस करंट को डिस्कस कर लेंगे आज ही के लेक्चर में इंशाल्लाह। ओके जी। तो मैग्नेटाइजेशन मैग्नेटाइजेशन करंट की तो बात होगी। What is this coal-loss current? ये वो कंपोनेंट है, which is the current required to make up for hysteresis and eddy current losses. ठीक है? ये make up current है in order to overcome that effect. Okay, now uh, let's continue with the same topic. Uh, here you can see uh, that the average flux is given by this relation. This relationship was discussed previously as well. Now, uh, uh, if if the primary voltage, the alternating voltage be represented by this relationship, given as uh, Vp is equal to Vm cos omega t, and this you can see is an alternating uh, uh, voltage, it's an AC. So now, uh, by using the above relationship, we can simply find out the value of the flux as well. So if we just replace this voltage into the previous equation, uh, we shall have the relationship for our flux. As you can see, uh, the flux is given by this relationship. So if, if you see, the since the voltage is represented by a cause, and after simply integrating this relationship, we have found out the value of the flux. It's in it's, it's sine omega of t. You can see that the voltage and flux, they are out of phase. Okay, so there is a, a, a phase difference of 90 degree. Now here you can also see the uh, the BH curve. Uh, the magnetomotive force is there on the x-axis while you have the flux on the y-axis. And if the values of the current required to produce a given flux, 
are compared to the flux in the core at different times then we shall be able to uh, have a sketch of the magnetization current in the winding on the core this shall be shown to you in the upcoming slide okay students so here we are going magnetization current ko dekhne ja rahe. so if you pay attention here yahan pe agar aap dekhein ye jo curve aapko nazar aa raha hai this is the uh, this is the curve for the applied voltage vp and flux have a look flux to have wo, there is a 90 degree lag okay between the two quantities theek hai aap kisi bhi instant ki dekh sakte hain क्योंकि दे आर रिलेटेड विद ईच अदर वायर इंटीग्रेशन और डिफ्रेंसिएशन वट एवर यू वॉन्ट टू से ठीक है सो देर इज अंटी डिग्री लैग अगर आप देख सकते हैं कि जहां पे मेरे पास वोल्टेज इज मैक्सिम माई फ्लक्स इज जीरो ठीक है सो ये मेरे पास एक रिलेशनशिप आपको यहाँ नजर आ रहा है और यहाँ से भी आप देख सकते हैं कि फाइ इज रिलेटेड विद माई वोल्टेज विद साइन फंक्शन ठीक है सो नाइन्टी डिग्री का आपस में एक आपके पास फेस डिफरेंस आएगा सो अब यहाँ हम करके क्या कर रहे हैं वी आर कंपेयरिंग दिस कर्व विद दिस कर्व दिस इज माय मैग्नेटोमोटिव फोर्स ओके मैग्नेटोमोटिव फोर्स और द बी एच कर्व बी एच कर्व में मेरे पास यहाँ पे बी होता था यहाँ फ्लक्स देख रहे हैं तो मुझे यहाँ मालूम है कि किसी भी इंस्टेंट के ऊपर मैं फ्लक्स को यहाँ कंपेयर कर सकता हूँ इसके साथ ठीक है ना रिमेंबर दिस हेयर द रेफरेंस और द एक्सेस एस टी यहाँ पे हम इसे मैग्नेटोमोटिव फोर्स के साथ बात कर रहे हैं यू नो कि जब हम करंट को बढ़ाते जाते हैं आहिस्ता आहिस्ता फ्लक्स बढ़ते जाते हैं और एक वक्त आती है जिसमें कोर मेरे पास क्या हो जाती है सेचुरेट कर जाती है ठीक है तो इसकी मदद से अगर हम इनको आपस में कंपेयर करें एक्चुअली तो हमारे पास एक ही कर्व एक करंट का कर्व मिलता है ना दिस करंट इज कॉल्ड माई दिस इज माई मैग्नेटाइजेशन करंट ठीक है दिस इज माई मैग्नेटाइजेशन करंट एंड इट्स इफ यू पे अटेंशन यू विल सी कि ये एक साइनोसॉडल करंट नहीं है बल्कि इसके अंदर कोई हाई फ्रीक्वेंसी कंपोनेंट्स है ठीक है तो ये जो और दूसरा ये जो करंट है दिस मैग्नेटाइजेशन करंट इज एक्चुअली लैग द वोल्टेज ठीक है वोल्टेज को लैग कर रहे हैं एंड वोल्टेज लैग कर रहे हैं अप्लाई टू द कोर जो कोर पे आपने वोल्टेज अप्लाई कर रहे हैं उसे लैग कर रहे हैं बाई नाइनटी डिग्री क्यों क्योंकि ये बिल्कुल फ्लक्स के साथ साथ बढ़ रहा है अगर आप देखें ठीक है तो फ्लक्स आपके पास इंक्रीज कर रहे हैं यहाँ पे तो आपके पास आप ये फिनोमिना यहाँ देख सकते हैं ठीक है सिमिलरली करंट यहाँ पे आपके पास इंक्रीज कर रहा है और उसके बाद आप देख सकते हैं फ्लक्स इज डिक्रीजिंग फ्रॉम इस मैक्सिमम पीक टू द मिनिमम टू द नेगेटिव पीक यहाँ पे आ रहा है और यहाँ पे आप करंट को भी देख सकते हैं सो करंट इज डिक्रीजिंग ठीक है सो प्लीज पे अटेंशन एंड द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट इज दिस दैट द फंडामेंटल कंपोनेंट ऑफ द मैग्नेटाइजेशन करंट इट लैक्स द वोल्टेज अप्लाइड टू द कोर बाय नाइनटी डिग्री सो ये वो कंपोनेंट है जो मेरे पास आउट ऑफ फेज है विद रिस्पेक्ट टू The applied voltage. So, अगर आप सिर्फ ये पॉइंट भी नोट कर लेते हैं कि दिस इज द कंपोनेंट विच इज आउट ऑफ फेज विद अप्लाइड वोल्टेज तो आपको आगे प्रॉब्लम नहीं होगी ओके स्टूडेंट्स नाउ लेट्स डिस्कस अबाउट द सेकेंड कंपोनेंट ऑफ द एक्साइटेशन करंट ठीक है विच इज द कोर लॉस करंट ठीक है अगर आप यहां देखें तो ये जो आपके पास कर वे दिस इज रिप्रेजेंटिंग दैट कंपोनेंट द कोर लॉस करंट ठीक है एंड इफ यू पे अटेंशन इसकी वैल्यू मैक्सिमम कहां पर है ठीक है अगर आप यहां देखें द इस वैल्यू इज मैक्सिमम एक नॉन लीनियर रिलेशनशिप है और ये मैक्सिमम है मेरे पास कहां पे व्हेन द फ्लक्स पासिस थ्रू जीरो तो फ्लक्स जैसे ही जीरो से पास कर रहे हैं उस पॉइंट के ऊपर जो मेरे पास कोल लॉस करंट है मैक्सिमम है क्यों ऐसा है क्योंकि एक्चुअली जो मेरे पास एडी करंट्स होते हैं ना कोर के अंदर दीज एडी करंट्स आर प्रोपोर्शनल टू द रेट ऑफ चेंज ऑफ फ्लक्स डी फाइव ऑफ डी फाइव और डी टी एंड दिस इज द पॉइंट वेयर द रेट ऑफ चेंज ऑफ फ्लक्स इज मैक्सिमम ठीक है यही वजह है कि मेरे पास यहाँ पे जो एक कंपोनेंट है दिस कंपोनेंट इज मैक्सिमम अच्छा ये एक डॉटेड से आपको कंपोनेंट नजर आ रहा है दिस इज द फंडामेंटल कंपोनेंट ऑफ द कोर कोर लॉस करंट ठीक है और ये कंपोनेंट क्या है ये एक्चुअली दिस कंपोनेंट इज इन फेज विद द वोल्टेज अप्लाई टू द कोर कैसे पता चल रहा है मुझे यहां से बिकॉज दिस कंपोनेंट इज नाइनटी डिग्री आउट ऑफ फेज विद विद दिस फ्लक्स विच मीन दिस इज इन फेज विथ द अप्लाइड वोल्टेज क्योंकि आउट ऑफ फेज विद फ्लक्स By 90 degree, therefore in phase है with the voltage applied. क्योंकि पिछली फिगर में मैंने आपको दिखाया था कि वोल्टेज और फ्लक्स के दरमियान एक 90 डिग्री का फेज लैग है ठीक है सो एक्चुअली मेरे पास ये डॉटेड कंपोनेंट नहीं होता बल्कि दिस इज द फंडामेंटल कंपोनेंट एक्चुअल कंपोनेंट इज दिस जो आपको सॉलिड लाइन से यहाँ पे नजर आ रहा है एंड दिस इज अ नॉन लीनियर ठीक है ये नॉन लीनियरिटी क्यों आ रही है दिस इज एक्चुअली बिकॉज ऑफ द हिस्टेरिस ठीक है 
کیونکہ جب آپ ہسٹیرسس کا افیکٹ آتا ہے آپ سیچوریشن میں جاتے ہیں زیادہ تو آپ کے پاس ہسٹیرسس کا افیکٹ آتا ہے and this you are bound to get into non-linearities اوکی جی سٹوڈنٹ سو فائنلی ہم اب ایکسائٹیشن کرنٹ کو دیکھ سکتے ہیں آپ اگر دیکھیں it's a very complex wave form آپ کو تھوڑی سی پرابلم ہو رہی ہے اس کو انڈرسٹینڈ کرنے میں but please do not worry about it ہمیں صرف یہ انڈرسٹینڈ کرنے کہ اس ایکسائٹیشن کرنٹ کی دو کمپوننٹ ہیں one is my magnetization component and the other is my core loss current component magnetization کا جو component ہے this component is to ensure that my core remains magnetized ٹھیک ہے and this is to for the iron loss component ٹھیک ہے جس میں hysteresis اور ایڈی کی کمپوننٹ آتے ہیں جب آپ دونوں ویف فارمز کو جو ہم نے مگنیٹائزیشن کرنٹ کی دیکھی تھی اور جو ہم نے کول لاؤس کی دیکھی تھی اگر ان دونوں کو آپ ایک ساتھ سمپلی ایڈ کر دیں تو آپ کے پاس جو ریلیشن آیا گا وہ کچھ اس طریقے سے نظر آگا جو آپ یہاں پہ ایک سالیڈ لائن سے دیکھ رہے ہیں ٹھیک ہے سٹوڈنٹس سو اوکے سٹوڈنٹس ناو لیٹس سمرائز جو بورنگ کمپوننٹ ہے گوڈ نیوز اس دیٹ اس اوور ٹھیک ہے سو پریشان ہونے کی ضرورت نہیں ہے آپ لوگوں کو بائی دا وی اگر آپ کو کوئی پرابلم یا فیل ہو رہی ہے you can ask question during the interactive session as well okay so to summarize this remember اسے وقت ہم نے کوئی load apply نہیں کیا تھا we are not talking about load so this is actually the case when the transformer is at no load secondary open circuited تھا proper loss is negligible ہے کیوں کیونکہ میرے پاس current flow ہی نہیں کر رہا جو current flow کر رہا ہے وہ بہت ہی minimum current ہوتے ٹھیک ہے this is very small current in the excitation branch اور پھر اس کے بھی دو کمپوننٹ ہیں one is the magnetization component اور دوسرا core loss component ہے ان کو ہم نے summarize کر لیا تھا اور یہاں پہ میں یہاں پہ ایک چیز آپ کو بتا دوں کہ this core loss component اور IH plus E یہ کون سا کمپوننٹ ہے this is the component جو in phase component ہے ٹھیک ہے with the applied voltage therefore آپ کو یہاں پہ cost theta نظر آ رہے ٹھیک ہے this is also called the active component کیونکہ in phase component ہے اور اسے ہم ساتھ ساتھ iron loss component بھی کہتے ہیں so یہ والا جو component ہے this is in phase with the applied voltage میں بار بار کیوں فوکس کروں ان فیز اور آؤٹ آف فیز کی بات جو کروں کیونکہ جب ہم ایکویلنٹ سرکٹ کی طرف جائیں گے تو وہاں آپ کو اس کی امپورٹنس سمجھ رہا ہے بھی ٹھیک ہے اور جو مگنیٹائزیشن کمپننٹ ہے یہ ہمارے پاس 90 ڈگری آؤٹ آف فیز ہے لیک کرتا ہے وولٹیج کو ٹھیک ہے اور 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 ایک چیز آپ کو یہ یاد رہے کہ جو نو لوڈ پرائمری کرنٹ ہے وہ انتہائی ایک مینیوٹ کرنٹ ہوتے ٹھیک ہے اس جس ون ٹو ٹو پرسنٹ آف دا ف my core remains magnetized and I'm able to overcome the eddy current and the hysteresis components. Okay students, we are done with transformers at no load. Now a small brief discussion is when you put transformer on load. What happens at that time? Okay? For that, you have shown a scenario here. It's pretty simple میں یہاں پہ اس کو ان دو سلائیڈز کے بعد پھر لیکچر آج کے کلوز کر دوں گا ٹھیک ہے I understand آج کو لیکچر تھوڑا سا لیندی ہو گیا تین چار منٹ but please be with me so that ہم اس ٹاپک کو ختم کر سکیں اور نیکس کلاس سے ہم پھر ایک نیا ڈسکشن سٹارٹ کر سکیں اوکے سو ہم کہتے ہیں کہ جب ہم لوڈ کنیکٹ کرتے ہیں now please see now here in this figure you see no load has been connected when you connect a load which has been shown in this figure So, we have that a current will start flowing in the load. Okay? A current will flow in I2. Okay, now this I2 will flow in it. So, what will happen? It will set up its own MMF, Magnetomotive Force, N2 into I2. So, what is Magnetomotive Force? When it will flow in the current, it will become its own field. Now, this field, again, this is something like closed lenses law. This flux, this flux is going to اپوز یہ فلکس کون سے فائی ٹو جو فلکس ہے ٹھیک ہے یہ فلکس کیا ہوگا this will oppose the flux the main flux ہے ٹھیک ہے جو initially تھا transformer میں ٹھیک ہے even جب load نہیں بھی تھا تو this will start opposing that flux اور ہوگا کیا since it is in opposite direction this will weaken the primary flux اور جب primary flux میرے پاس کم ہو جائے گا momentarily just for seconds تو ہمارے پاس اس وقت کیا ہوگا v1 will get larger than E1. یہ چیز آپ کو تھوڑی پریشان کری ہوگی کہ what is V1 and what is E1. تو E1 میں سب آپ کو سمجھانے کے لئے یہاں دکھا دیتا ہوں کہ E1 کیا چیز ہے جی یہ رہا میرے پاس E1 یہاں پہ ہے. ٹھیک ہے؟ سو اگر میرے پاس transformer load is not connected at load then یہ دونوں same ہی ہیں. ٹھیک ہے؟ بٹ جب ہم نے load connect کیا تو میرے پاس کیا ہوا جی؟ flux weaken ہوا. flux weaken ہونے کی وجہ سے میرے پاس 
दिस ई वन गेट्स लोअर देन वी वन ठीक है ये इवन ये इवन कम हो चुका है वी वन के मुकाबले में वी वन ज्यादा है अब क्या होगा क्योंकि वी हैव अ वोल्टेज सोर्स है दिस वी वन इज अ सोर्स ठीक है तो होगा क्या मेरे पास कि अब मेरे पास यहां से करंट फ्लो करना शुरू करेगा सो देर विल बी अ कंपोनेंट अ करंट विल फ्लो इन टू द प्राइमरी वाइंडिंग एंड वो जो करंट का फ्लो है उसको हमने रिप्रेजेंट किया है बाय दिस कंपोनेंट आई टू डैश जो आपको यहां नजर आ रहा होगा ठीक है तो यहां पे मेरे पास प्राइमरी साइड के ऊपर एक और करंट का कंपोनेंट होगा विच विल स्टार्ट फ्लोइंग इन द प्राइमरी विच इज गिवन बाय आई टू डैश ठीक है जी Now remember, I2 dash जब flow करेगा तो I2 dash will again set up its own magnetomotive force, ठीक है और इससे जो अब फ्लक्स बनेगा दैट विल बी गिवन बाय फाइव टू डैश ठीक है एंड दिस फाइव टू डैश विल एग्जैक्टली बी एक्चुअली इक्वल टू दिस फ्लक्स फाइव टू जो कि लोड की वजह से हुआ था तो होगा क्या कैन यू फिगर दिस आउट फाइव टू डैश विल कैंसल आउट द फ्लक्स फाइव टू एंड एट द एंड ऑफ द डे What we are gonna have is that core के अंदर जो मेरे पास flux होगा that will remain the same, which means the effect of secondary current जो कि load की वजह से था is immediately neutralized by the additional primary current. Okay students? So जब हम कहते हैं कि transformer at load भी है तो जो load की वजह से जो effect आया है flux के ऊपर that gets cancelled out very shortly. ठीक है and your and the flux remains the same. In your core. अच्छा जी lastly this is the last slide of uh, today's lecture. Uh, अगर मुझे एक transformer, if I were transformer, a real transformer, and if there, if we need some conditions so that this real transformer can be converted to a, the to an ideal transformer, these are the conditions which have been cited here. If you see, so the core must have no hysteresis or eddy currents. So हमने पहले भी कहा था कि ideal current, ideal transformer is a Lossless device. Secondly, हमारे पास primary के ऊपर जो magnetic force है that is equal to secondary uh, magnetic motive force. In short, they cancel out each other, and the magnetic motive force is equal to zero. Which means, using this very relationship, हमारे पास current का relation आ रहा है. ठीक है? ये relation हमने पहले भी देखा हुआ है. So this relation must hold for a real transformer as well. Apart from that. There should not be any leakage flux in the core. It should be zero. Okay, zero. Na chahiye mere paas flux, which means the uh, all the flux must be linked. The prime, yahan se jo flux primary mein tha, it must get all linked with the flux at the secondary side. Okay, students. Lastly, there should not be any resistance in the transformer winding. Okay, ji. So, uh, which means that the winding ke losses hote hain as current flows. तो उसके अंदर कॉपर लॉसेज होते हैं ठीक है सो वी से दैट देयर आर द रिवाइंडिंग्स हैव नो रेजिस्टेंस एट ऑल प्रैक्टिकली ऐसा होता नहीं है बट दिस इज जस्ट एन अजम्पशन सो दैट वी कैन कन्वर्ट अ रियल ट्रांसफार्मर इनटू एन आइडियल ट्रांसफार्मर सो स्टूडेंट्स दैट इज फॉर टुडे दैट्स ऑल ये हमारा डिस्कशन यहां पे हम क्लोज कर देते हैं आई अंडरस्टैंड कि दिस वाज अ बिट अ ड्राई टॉपिक बट डोंट वरी फ्रॉम नेक्स्ट क्लास ऑनवर्ड्स वी शैल बी doing some numericals we will be uh, doing more interesting stuff this is also interesting but initially it takes some times to understand this top uh, this topic should you have any queries feel free to write me an email or you can ask question during our interactive session thank you so much students for being with me inshallah i shall see you in our next class next online class till then uh, please take care of yourself and your families May Allah be with all of us.